we bring on uh, director Mark Pellington, my friend who has done, uh, has been around the indie film world for so long. I, I need to tell you some stuff about Mark. Mark created one of the greatest, most innovative shows on television in the 80s called Buzz. It was a brilliant show that was so far ahead of its time. Look up this show, Buzz, from MTV. Buzz was a show that was on late night on MTV, and it blew my mind. It was so far ahead of its time. It talked about politics, made you think. It was funny. It was bizarre, filled with mini documentaries. Film Threat was even featured on one of the episodes of Buzz. It was a brilliant show. Not only that, Mark Pellington, you might recognize him. Yes, he was in Jerry Maguire. I know he gets that a lot. He was in Jerry Maguire as one of the sports agents. You can see him at Jerry Maguire's bachelor party. Uh, yucking it up. And he's also made some amazing independent films. Arlington Road among them. He made a recent film that played slam dance called The Severing, which is a part experimental film that that just sort of we worms its way into your head. It's hypnotic. We've covered the severing on, um, on, on filmthreat.com with reviews. Uh, Mark Pellington is today a re-release of his movie Going All the Way, starring Ben Affleck, is out in theaters today in limited release. It is a, it is a slightly new cut of the film. Uh, I'm, I, Mark, is, why don't I just bring Mark on? Why don't I just bring Mark on? Mark Pellington, welcome to the Film Threat Livecast. Dude, so good to see you. Are you at your office? No, I'm in a hotel in New York getting ready to uh, <laughs> premiere it tonight at the Quad Cinema with my friend Alex Ross Perry, who's going to do the Q&A afterwards. Oh, that's great. First of all, congratulations. Uh, last time I saw you, which was a few years ago, um, I don't even know if I can talk about this. Can I talk about the doc? The doc? Yeah, we're still... we're. Getting closer and closer, trying to get some finishing funds. Uh, the Buzz doc, yes, Buzz was a show in 1990 for MTV, televised acid. William Burroughs was our kind of voice and host, way ahead of its time, kind of a, a uh, thematic collage that kind of predicted, it was very prescient about the future. It was the internet before the internet and uh, kind of took current affairs and put them through a blender and... Uh, yeah, happy to see you again, Chris, and uh, and I can tell you a little bit about going all the way, which is also a little bit of revisionist re-editing, you know? Well, let's hear it. So the movie came out in 97. Um, was it, what was the name of the company? Was it Polygram or? Gramercy. The, Gramercy. The I mean, yeah. Gramercy. And they did a lot of indie films. What was it like? You weren't, 100% happy with the released version at that time. Yeah, you know, th look, this was a coming of age film. I did it um, first movie, right? All the first time mistakes and a drama, comedy, very poignant, a lot of deep themes of friendship and coming of age. And, you know, but I shoot a 135 page script in 30 days. And I think the version, it was a book I read growing up. So I loved it. Had a great young cast, Ben Affleck, Jeremy Davies, Rachel Weiss, Nick Offerman's first movie, Rose McGowan, Amy Locaine. So it was all these people before they were stars. And the move, we showed it at Sundance, we sold it. And the version that went to Sundance, I liked it. And the version that got released, you still like it, but it wasn't quite, you know, the no studio is ever going to say make it longer, darker, and more depressing, right? They're going to say make it shorter and funnier and shorter and less dark. And so the version that came out in the theaters got pretty decent reviews, good performances, but it wasn't quite, I was kind of like, ah, yeah, that first timer mistake, you know, that first timer like, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. And blending satire and realism is very, very difficult, very hard. So there was a lot of shit that ended up on the cutting room floor. So cut to 25 years later during COVID, I'm bored, I'm rifling around my office and I find an editor's assembly on a beta cam. I convert it to a drive and it's three hours and 40 minutes. And it's everything we shot in order, everything 
that the editor, editor, award winner, Leo Trombetta, looked at. I put it on a drive. I said, Leo, we should do something with this. A couple conversations, and three months later, he comes back with a two-hour and ten-minute version of the film. And I said, wow. So simultaneously, a company that was, we were playing with some Mothman prophecies in Arlington Road for a company because Lakeshore had folded the company that made it. I said, you know, you guys have a Ben Affleck movie that nobody ever saw. Well, dollar signs go off, cut to Oscilloscope, great company that had been making these reissues of 90s movies, kind of like redoing them and putting them out with DVDs. So I sent them the cut. And they really, they dug it and said, let's do it. So it's got 50 minutes of new footage, a complete new score, new titles, a voiceover. So it's a really a director's edit. And me and Leo just kind of like, it's the version of the film that I think is a better version of the book. And it's a more complete psychological, internal, dramatic version of Dan Wakefield's story. Dan Wakefield wrote it, wrote the screenplay. He's 90 years old, and he got to see the movie before he lost his sight six months ago. So it's really full circle and a chance for any filmmaker out there or any musician to do the, redo their first record, redo your first novel, a chance to kind of revisit that first piece of work with the experience now of 25 years of filmmaking and really kind of tell the story in a, in a more complete more mature, more immersive way that protects the actors, the tone. Uh, you know, it's a real movie. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing the first time. Well, uh, Mark, you've got uh, getting a lot of love and a lot of questions in the chat. Do you mind answering some chat Please questions? Please do. Let's do it. Um, let's see. Uh, people are saying, Bill S. Preston Esquire. I know what that's a reference to. Ooh, <laughs> Pellington directed the music video for the Connells' Stone Cold Yesterday. And Goober says, I liked Mothman. Creepy. Amanda Nowicki says, I think my mom watched Going All the Way when it first came out in 97. So there you go. Mike MC Wong says, wow, Going All the Way. I watched that a long time ago. Also, Arlington Road was indeed awesome. And Portland 182 has a question. Have you shown the longer cut to the cast? I mean, is and it's interesting, like Ben Affleck, this is like his rise, right? Like, yeah, he, this was right. He was right on the precipice. And yes, we've sent the cut to everybody and some have seen it and some haven't gotten back to us. And, but they were all like aware of the recut and really supportive. And, um, you know, some have shown up to different screenings and stuff, but you know, they all are aware about it and it's been really, really a positive experience. That's great. And then um, another question here, TPPT says, and uh, release I bet the release I bet with major actors had to be a challenge. Were there any issues with rights? No, because, you know, they don't, they don't have any, you didn't have to go back to them once you were kind of, you know, they signed off their rights. They, they were cleared for the original movie and the original shoot. So you're just, redoing all that stuff and amanda to wiki has a question or a comment here uh quote i didn't know what the f i was doing the first time greatest line any director could give i, I literally had been since 85 when i was at mtv and i made buzz and poetry series i had shot tons of stuff i'd done tons of videos and commercials but i literally didn't know what like screen direction was ted hope my friend always said you know, he told me years before, he goes, you just need to do a short, like master, close-up, close-up, over, over, wide shot, like just the basic film grammar. So, you know, each scene in the first film that we released was like, each scene was right, like realism, satire, wider lens. But when you put it together, it's like a little imbalance. So then you go see Hal Ashby or American Beauty and you're like, oh, there you go. That's how you mix or, or sideways, that's how you mix comedy and drama, like, you know, like uh, rubber bands around a baseball, not not kind of like chop, choppy. Cool. But first time mistake. And then uh, uh, Goober says, what did you like the most about directing music videos? The music, the freedom. 
And I've made a lot of very elaborate, long narrative videos. Music videos are probably my favorite forum because they take my subconscious and you know, I'm probably work more, more comfortably in a image subconscious mode than plot driven linear mode where the structure has to kind of make sense. That's why the best films like Arlington Road have had strong blueprints. I like Mothman too, but there's a lot of freedom to do stuff. But, um, you know, right now, the next wave of movies I would like to have be like what I've learned from narrative linear films to what I've liked to do in videos and kind of let them come out, you know, let it emerge like that. And then uh, Solomon Thornton says, my cousin used to record the Buzz episodes. I thought it was cool. I used to record them. Before, before I knew you, I had all these VHS tapes with every episode of Buzz. I think I missed I missed a few. That needs to, when the documentary about Buzz comes out, please find a way to have them available to see in some form or, you know, maybe it goes to streaming. I don't know. It was so far ahead of its time. It was so far ahead of its time. Well, you know, on my What's website, there? on my website, markpellington.com, if you go to TV, there's there's a couple pieces of different episodes. I haven't put all 13 on there because number one, you know, I'd probably get sued and we're in the middle of making the doc, but there's a really great 48 minute best of buzz compilation on my website that really gives you the best of the best pieces on there. And the doc is gonna have a big section of it about that idea of taping because it is very much about also the story of the transition from analog to digital. People don't remember like in 1990, it's like there was no internet. There was no like DVR. There was no, like it was tape and MTV only showed it once. They didn't rebroadcast it. It was one time. So it was like kind of a, like a theater performance, right? Each show aired once and that's what it was. Look at this. I'm looking at your website right now. You can actually connect with you on it. Is it in the vault? I bet, I bet the nope, vault. Nope, nope. It's under television. I'm glad television. you, you opened right. it up. I'm going to go the to vault, gonna, I mean, oh, every, all my old MTV shit is there. No, not the vault. Uh, okay. Go back. Television. Damn. I got it. Television. Here we go. Wow. So it's Look not that. If you go down to Buzz Compilation, see all my United States of Poetries are there, which there you is go. cool. Dude, yeah. this is oh my god, this is awesome. This is awesome. I, I don't think you just, people... you just you should play this on a right. loop on your film threat. There we and go. One, and and I should say it's Chris's uh, to the documentary, the idea was Chris's idea. Well first what? you said just do you said do buzz again as a show. Right. And then you said, Oh, do a doc. So you it was your idea, number one. And number two, I've got some great ideas to redo Black Mirror, not not Black Mirror, but to, you know, take Black Mirror meets Buzz. How's that sound? Well, that would be amazing. I just the show Buzz was just so far ahead; it just blew my mind. Um, that show, and it was one of the things. It was never advertised. It was never promoted on MTV. It just showed up late night, and I don't even know if it aired. I don't even know if they repeated it. I just remember like they never repeated it. It, it was 13 <sighs> half hours and that was it. They canceled it. They said it was weird, depressing, and expensive. You can't be all three. <laughs> yeah, they don't care if it's any oh, of those. My things. tombstone, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, we're gonna let that play while we uh uh I know we have to wrap it up. You're in New York right now for the premiere. When is the premiere tonight? Uh seven the first well, it's already showing afternoon shows i'm sure it's beating the shit out of avatar in box <laughs> office gross right like in its one tiny theater but i'm so i have to say i'm so proud of the film and really really pleased and and respect the oscilloscope so much and and the sarah and all the press people and they've just done a great job getting it out there and we're like for people who like 90s cinema um you know, and those guys, because it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like a '90s movie, because it's a fifth, it's set in the '50s, but it feels very contemporary. It feels like 
it feels like it could have been made last, you know, uh, last week. Um, so it's super cool. And it plays the, the first screening, big screen is tonight at seven. So if you're in Manhattan, get through the rain and come see it, or it's going to be all, all weekend and all next week. That's great. Uh, let's, uh, we still have some more questions here. I don't know much, how much time you have. Um, I got time. I okay, got time. cool. The favorite mu music video you directed asks Amanda Nowicki. I love Amanda. Uh, <laughs> it, you know what? It has to be Pearl Jam's Jeremy because that has just, it was the deepest first real narrative video I did. It was the most personal video I ever made at the time. And it's had the longest lasting impact. So it has to be my favorite because it's pretty powerful still to this day. And uh, what uh, uh, Eric Stratton asks, what kind of things did you add change to get more immersion? In Jeremy in or the, this uh, film? Going all the way, yeah. In this film, yeah. You know, immediately from the opening titles that were brilliantly done by Sergio Pinheiro, who had edited The Severing, I just, I said, I found a bunch of old reels of optical things and images I had shot for the movie and film leader and all this garbage I said, dude, go do your version of Seven. Because Kyle Cooper, who did the Seven titles, is a friend of mine. I said, go do your version of Seven. And let's start the movie saying we're inside a fucked up version of the 50s. Even Oscilloscope's poster. Everything is kind of a collage inside. Starts with voiceover. Starts with different music. So it's as immersive as you can get in an objective 2D sort of um, way. And then uh, uh, Kelpie says, absolutely love the Mothman prophecies. I understand you rejected many original scripts. What was your goal with the movie? Did you speak to John Keel? Spoke to John Keel. Um, I just rejected all the rewrites they had done. And I went back to the original script that Richard Haddam had done that I had turned down right after Arlington Road and just kind of worked with my friend Lewis Clark and Ernie Marrero and just took all the good stuff from the drafts where they were trying to make it more of a creature thing and got rid of all the creature stuff and just said, the less you see Mothman, the better. And we're working, we're really close. I'd say in a few months, we might be announcing the TV version of Mothman. And, you know, as I'm watching these images on uh, the buzz compilation that you have on your website, I'm struck with like, oh, these are early memes. These like... um all, all, just the, it just looks like it has that meme kind of feel uh, that sort of cut up the cut up tapes and the things, the techniques that William Burroughs talked about. Um, it's fascinating. Look, this is you put a, one of the things in the documentary that we're discovering now that we're going to get to is literally how Buzz formerly was the seeds of the same language of of TikTok, right? Yeah. So to try and draw that. And, you know, I've never been on TikTok. I've never, I don't know, or Snapchat. But if you talk about digestible, you know, two minute pieces of content with text, sound and image, Buzz did that in 1990, right? We were even doing that at MTV in the mid eighties. So that compression of form. And the most important thing to remember is Buzz was pre-mixed. It was sound first. Then we chop pictures on top of it. So all the audio bites and music were done first. Then we laid the picture on top of it. That's how we were trained at MTV. It wasn't until I made Going All The Way that we did sound afterwards. I was like, what are you talking about sound afterwards? You do the sound first. You strip out the audio and you make it sound right and feel right. And then you put the picture on top of it. Uh, Liam in Wales... Uh, we have an international audience watching us. Uh, Liam in Wales says, uh, what is it like restarting an old project? How did you approach the changes? Do you Did you find parts that really surprised you left out? You know, Leo, it was, it was like, we have 50 minutes of new stuff. We took out 20 minutes from the original film. This whole kind of story with a, a preacher who his mother had brought in who had caught him masturbating and was trying to change him. We just broomed that out because that was an elongated first act and put back in an entire 30 minute sequence of Ben Affleck growing a beard, which brought more Rachel Weiss, more of the mom scenes, a whole healing aspect of the third act. So, 
you know, you just you just look at it fresh and you're actually trying to tell the best version of the film that I don't think we ever got, you know, we I don't think we ever got had time to or had the opportunity to because we were just so exhausted getting the movie made and making it and then you sell it at Sundance and back then maybe even now it's just, you're like god can we just sell it it's mm -hmm. so by the time you're like tweaking it to come out with grammar so you're like fine you know what i mean <laughs> you, you weren't saying this has to be you know i mean you're like it's good it had gotten a good reaction at sundance sure you can take that little scene out but only when you look at something later and you see what's been missing do you really there's a lot more depth a lot more heart a lot darker a lot so therefore the darker it goes the deeper than the resonance of the catharsis in the third act and that you don't know until you kind of make some movies and uh last question from portland 182 asked do you have any future projects you can talk about well we're we're kind of already talking about one right now with buzz <laughs> but I any other a, future projects we got a thriller that i'm hoping to start soon called lone wolf and my opus is a project called Clang, written by Paul Schrader, which is a kind of unsolvable murder mystery. All right. Uh, and I can't wait uh, for the buzz doc. When you're ready, when you got a cut, Mark, let me know. I'd love to see it. If you got you know, a cut. When I see you after the new year, come over. I've got a five-hour big thing to watch. <laughs> All right. Let's watch it together. Yeah. You're right around the corner from El Coyote. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll tease a few uh, tease a few clips on the uh, on film threat. I would love to do that. Uh, Mark Pellington, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Congratulations on the screening tonight. Uh, I, I know it's going to go well, and um, uh, you're in good hands with Alex on your Q and A. So that's going to be great. Yeah, I love it. Alex. Sorry. Wrote nostalgia for me. One of my favorite movies that I made, and uh, he's a great artist and filmmaker, and. Uh, yeah, just happy to be here and uh thanks for all the support guys and all the questions from all the people great uh, mark you, have a great rest of your day have a great holiday i'll see you next year man see you babe bye take care later mark pellington is a cool yeah. freaking dude <laughs>